Hey everybody, David and David here from payitforward.com and upphone.com and in this video we're going to tell you about eight iOS 14 settings to turn on now. Right, the first one's pretty exciting. It's prevent cross-site tracking, which is going to protect your privacy as you're using the internet. David, uh, how do we do it? Let's go ahead and do it. Open up the settings app. We're going to show you to do it in Safari and in Chrome. Sweet. So we're going to scroll down to Safari and then scroll down to prevent cross-site tracking. Turn that on prevents advertisers from collecting information about you across multiple websites, helps you maintain some privacy. I'm gonna go back to settings, maybe you're a Chrome user. Uh, as Chrome's a little bit lower down in the list, there it is. And again, allow cross-site tracking. I guess you need to turn this one off to turn it on. Uh, just make sure that switch is not on. Right, it's a turn it off to turn it on feature. Yes. Next, reduce, Next, re please. reduce white point. Right. Reducing the white point means that it's gonna make your display may be a little bit darker, but it's also gonna save your battery life a whole lot. I think before I explain why, you should just show them All right. what it's like. Let's go back to settings and up to accessibility. Somewhere here, where'd it go? There it is, accessibility. Display and text size and scroll down to reduce white points. I'm gonna tap that switch, turn it on, and as you can see on an overhead cam, my screen just got much darker. Much darker, that's too dark for me. We like to, you know, recommend around 50. Yeah, that's where I keep it. And the reason is that the iPhone screen is so bright that sometimes I'm reading in bed at night and it was too bright for me. Like it actually was like kind of keeping me up even with night shift on. So by doing this, I can still see my phone just fine during the day, but at night it doesn't hurt my eyes and it saves battery life. It's a good idea. Yeah, I'm just actually gonna turn it off just for the video so you can actually see my screen in the overhead cam. The next You're setting welcome. to turn on now Sacrifice. is Wi-Fi calling. Okay, Wi-Fi calling allows you to make calls over your Wi-Fi connection to the internet, as opposed to the cellular voice connection or cellular data connection. And it's great for times when you have Wi-Fi service, but you don't maybe have great cell phone service. So it used to be people had to buy these wireless extenders from their carriers and they put them in their house and connect them to the Wi-Fi and then they'd have a good signal at home. Now all you have to do is flip a switch if you have signal issues at home, and a lot of people do, this will make your life better. Yes. So I'm gonna go back to the main page of settings and tap on phone. Tap on Wi-Fi calling. As you can see, it is already on. Just make sure that switch next to Wi-Fi calling on this iPhone is turned on. Right. It's pretty cool. Add Wi-Fi calling for other devices, pretty neat. You could add it for your iPad, your Mac. Next, let's talk about optimized battery charging. Optimized battery charging addresses an issue that happened a couple of years ago where Apple was caught slowing down people's iPhones because they were losing capacity. That was their reason for it. There's there was, actually, yeah, go ahead. Well, there's a class action lawsuit right now you can be a part of. Check right, out yeah, video. Apple settled that one real quick. Yeah. Lithium ion batteries do really well up to a certain percentage, but then if you keep charging them up to 100%, that's how they start to lose capacity. Yep, so let's go back to the main page of settings. Scroll to battery and then tap on battery health. Turn on that switch next to optimize battery charging. To reduce battery aging, your iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it. Next, let's talk about a brand new feature and that is exposure notifications. Exposure notifications were developed by Apple and Google together for COVID-19 contact tracing. They're designed to augment the efforts of your local health agency or your local health authority for instance, in New York State, it's not available yet because the health authorities have to opt into this feature. Also, there may be some privacy concerns that you have. There really is nothing to worry about with these exposure notifications. And the reason isn't because they're just nice guys. It's because they're trying to prove, Apple and Google is trying to prove to you that they can be trusted with your personal health data. They are not gonna screw this up, trust me. But watch our other video about how this all works and it's pretty fascinating what they've done. It's good stuff. Yep, so let's go back to the main page of the settings app once again and scroll, oh, I guess it's one up. Exposure notifications right there. Turn on exposure notifications. You'll see this little summary of what's going on. You tap continue. Enter your country and then state for us. Uh, unfortunately, New York doesn't have this app yet, but if you live in one of the few states that actually has the app, it'll show you how to install the app and get that set up. And next, we're gonna talk about low data mode. So let's go back to the main page of the settings app once again and scroll up to cellular. Tap on cellular data options at the top of the screen and here you'll see the switch for low data mode. Low data mode helps reduce Wi-Fi and cellular data usage. 
When low data mode is turned on, automatic updates and background tasks such as photo syncing are paused. Tap a switch, turn it on. So this is low data mode for cellular data, which is what I recommend turning on. You could also turn on low data mode for Wi-Fi networks individually, yep. but I don't think that's as necessary, especially because you've got a good signal at home. Your iPhone isn't gonna put out a whole bunch of extra battery power trying to download stuff. David, let's move on. Yeah, let's talk about text message forwarding. You can send the text that you get on your iPhone to your other devices, your iPad, your Mac. I actually turned this on this morning because I realized I didn't have it on and I, it, I'm getting texts on my Mac now and it's good. I, I like responding to text from my Mac and so I just have my iPhone with me all the time. Yeah, and I can type a lot faster on my Mac than I can on my iPhone. Yep, so let's go back to the main page of the settings app and scroll down to messages. Tap on text message forwarding and then just turn on the switch next to the devices you'd like to receive text on. Yep, I turn it on for all my devices. Gotta be careful. You know, if somebody else is using it, they're gonna be able to see your text, but I don't share my devices with anybody. Yeah, selfish. You stay away from me. Yeah, it's my iPad. The last setting we wanna talk about is preserve camera mode. I like this feature, especially because most people don't know what live photos are and they end up leaving them on, or it's the default. Mm -hmm. So live photos are actually like little video files. If you've ever gotten a photo from somebody in the Messages app and it moves just like a little bit, they're designed for taking these action shots. I really don't like live photos at all. I don't get it's stupid. But anyway, these, these photos are giant. They're huge because it's like taking a burst of photos. It takes, I think, a second and a half uh, before and after, and then you can pick any photo in between, but people don't know that they're doing that. So frequently I'll get a live photo and a text message of like a piece of paper or something that really should just be a regular photo. But then that thing is 20 megabytes. Is this a ploy by Apple to sell more iCloud storage? Possibly. By inflating the amount of size that the photos are? Maybe. Anyway, so like what this setting is going to do is it's going to allow you to set your camera, turn off live photos, whatever other settings you want to turn on, and then the next time you go to open the camera app, it has it all reset back mm -hmm. to the main you know, so live photos. Yeah, or maybe you're you, somebody uses your phone and take a lot of videos and you don't want it to switch to video every single time. It's, right. Yeah. So let's go back to the main page of the settings app. Scroll down to camera, tap on preserve settings, and just make sure that switch next to camera mode is turned on. Right. I've also got the switch next to live photo setting. Make preserve. sure that's turned on too. Yeah. Live photo is the one to turn on. I mean, maybe these are two separate settings and I was just wrong with what I just said, but still, I don't care if it's eight and a half settings to turn on now. Turn both of those on. And if you can only choose one, because you're like, I'm only going to turn on eight settings, choose live photo. <laughs> and stop sending those stupid live photos to people. If you wanna learn about some iOS 14 settings to turn off, check out the video in the card above and the description section below. Overall, it will be changing, you know, 20 settings and you'll be, you'll be ready to go with iOS 14. Mm. That's gonna be coming out relatively soon. We're using the beta right. Apple event September 15th. Yes, looking forward to that. Probably not gonna announce a new iPhone though. Unfortunate. Yeah, next month. That's the rumor anyway. Thanks for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below with any other questions. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more great videos about iPhones.